All right, so we'll get started early, maybe 20 seconds earlier than that. Welcome to the graveyard session, as they call it. <laughs> uh, uh, we're going to end the two hectic days that you guys have on the most interesting topic, security, of course. So seats open in the front if you guys want to come up front and learn more about security. It's fully secure, so don't worry about <laughs> it. All right, so my name is Balaji Ganesan. My colleague, Don Bosco Durai, we're both part of uh, security team at Hortonworks, and we're going to talk about today um, what, what, do we see, what we are seeing in security areas um, in, in Hadoop today? What are the current capabilities in Hadoop to meet that? And, and what does future look like? And how do we go from here, right? So we're going to be talking about some future concepts as well. So a mix of both, what we have today and what we go. So let's start with this. Let's start with what, what are we seeing, what we are seeing. And obviously, you are in the field. Um, you will know more than me on this. Um, but we are seeing more and more Hadoop uh, being used as what we call as a data lake, data ocean, data pond. But the idea is build Hadoop as a centralized data store and run applications on top of that. What does it mean? Right? So what does it mean when you go in your organization and talk to your security teams? They are looking at it differently. They are looking at data from all corners of the enterprise coming into this open system called Hadoop. Right? They are looking at this system that users can access data through multiple ways. They can run a MapReduce, they can run fake jobs, they can access it through Hive, they can have an HBase database pointed to data in Hadoop and access it, right? So your security team is looking at this system with multiple access points going in. And more and more, the use cases, enterprises are looking at multi-tenant, right? Can I have this data like built and shared across the organization in a multi-tenant fashion? What does multi-tenant mean? So it means Different business groups and users can run their own applications using the same resource and the same cluster, physical cluster. And this has been made possible by Jan, of course. But from a security standpoint, you still need to make sure they are segregated. That they are, every user is, is running their applications and able to access the data they are only entitled to. So security standpoint, multi-tenancy adds other layer. And this becomes one central box. If you're putting all your secrets all sensitive data into Hadoop, it becomes more of a focus within the organization, right? So there is a need for, what, what, what does Hadoop really need? Hadoop needs security baked in within each of the components, right? And it needs a more consistent approach and a more centralized way of managing. And that's where, that's where I think the community has come a long way in doing that. So we're gonna be, we're gonna be talking about parts of where we are today and where we can go. So where are we today? Where is Hadoop security? So some of you might have seen this way of slide before. When security, we talk about five things. Right? There's the authentication part of making sure users and system users, business users, are trusted. You know who's logging in, and they're not impersonating other. Right? The, the access control is the authorization part. Once the users are logged in, what are they access to? What they can do and cannot do? And the third aspect is around auditing, right? So we're making sure you, we keep a track of history in Hadoop of all the user access history. It could be business user or system users, and be able to report on it for compliance purposes, but be able to go back and analyze what happened, right? The fourth aspect is around data protection, protecting data when it's moving from point A to point B, but also when it is at rest. And many compliance and audit standards enforce that data is encrypted. And correlation to that is data, do we need to anonymize data when we're doing analytics? And the fifth aspect we think, I think really important is, is because, and we talk about Hadoop, it's the platform itself is not one software. It's a combination of different components put together to handle multiple use cases. It needs a more consistent and more centralized and comprehensive approach. So central administration, for security is really becoming more important. Enterprises don't have the wherewithal to go to each individual Hadoop component and manage security, nor do they have the knowledge to do that, right? And this comprehensive security means. So we have part, we have basic security built in. So Hadoop today is secure, is what I can declare today, right? So we, uh, in, if you install and do a use case, it has the basic security built in. Uh, in the authentication part, the community has standardized on Kerberos. So you will see Kerberos, this MID standard, 
came up and, and um, Owen O'Malley and others from Yahoo built the first version of Kerberos um, in Yahoo. And we, we have progressed as a community on extending the reach of Kerberos across the platform, Hadoop platform. And, and Kerberos bring, brings a pretty robust standard for logging in. It can be integrated to Active Directory in the enterprise infrastructure. And with Ambari, the recent version of Ambari 2, we can automate the whole thing of install Kerberos. And so with authorization, auditing, and administration is where Ranger plays a role. And I will talk about Ranger, what we have today. We'll do a demo. And in data protection, uh, we have recently worked with the community to introduce HDFS file-level encryption. HBase community in the 0.98 version introduced HBase cell-level encryption as well. And so it's coming up. It's not there that we need to be in terms of enterprise grade, but slowly getting there. So what is Ranger? So Ranger offers centralized security administration, has a unified console where you can go and manage security policies for HDFS, Hive, HBase, Storm, and Knox. And it offers fine grain access control, which means you can control access at a column level in Hive or you can control access at a column level in HPs or file level in HDFS. And we'll keep extending Ranger as we go. It offers consistent security that I talked about, also offers auditing. So Ranger has a centralized audit store where you can go and view the audit data in terms of who has access what. Kerberos, I just talked about with Ambari 2 we have a way to standardize the implementation of, this is a screenshot of the new Ambari version where you can go and easily set up KDCs and service principles and rotate key tabs as part of Kerberos. And so the, the pain point of Kerberos used to be the manual install, and now it's Ambari is taking up the role of automating that. We also want to talk about, in terms of perimeter security, what's available today is Apache Knox. And Knox has the concept of a perimeter security. It can come between your users and the clusters and protect services based on authorization. And it is very extensible in terms of authentication. So no longer users need to have Kerberos, but you can, they can use various enterprise standards. They can hook up with AD, you can work with SiteMinder, and we'll keep on extending NOx. And finally, on data protection, Hadoop does support uh, over-the-wire encryption. There are different standards uh, that comes with different access pattern. And for data at rest, we have introduced HDFS file-level encryption and HBase encryption. But the community itself, we need to work on making sure the KMS is robust enough. And then, again, in the HBase case, we can hook it up to a KMS as well. So there's some work in that part. So this is what we have today. So we got Ranger for access control, auditing, and administration, Kerberos and Knox for authentication, and data protection available as part of HDFS and HBase. So let's do a short demo on Ranger. And then let's come back on beyond this basic security, what can we do? Yeah, thanks, Balaji. So the primary goal of Ranger is to simplify how you manage the policies of all the components within Hadoop. So Ranger does a very good job on that. So in one from one portal, this is the web portal of the latest uh, uh, Ranger release uh, 0 0.4, where you can manage the policies for these five services right now. That is HDFS, Hive, HBase, Knox, and Storm. Uh, using one instance of Ranger, you can manage multiple clusters, and within the clusters, you can have multiple instances of the services. Like you may have two instances of high server, too, it doesn't matter. So you can still use Ranger to manage it. So let me pick one of the instances. I'll pick the Hive instance. So for the given instance, these are the list of the policies I have in my environment. And if you want to add a new policy, you can just go and add it out here. So let me pick one of the existing policy and edit it. So one of the goal of uh, ranges to make sure that <clears throat> as you're setting up the policies for all the components, we want to have the same user experience, the same layout, the same way you're going to configure the users, permissions, and everything. Um, so this is a typical layout for almost all the components. It has three main parts. Uh, the, the, this is the resources, you have the permissions, and you have the users and, and groups. The way it works is for a given component, like if it's high, the resource will be very specific for that. In the case of Hive, it is database, tables, and columns. And what we have done is we also simplified the way you're going to set up the policy. You can have, in a given policy, you can have one resource or you can have uh, uh, multiple res resources. So I can have set up the policy for two tables at the same time. If I want, I can also give a 
uh, wildcard. So if you have a lot of tables with the same naming convention you can give, the same thing goes for columns also. You can also go a lot more fine grain if you really want to in Arranger. You can pick a table, you can pick specific columns and give permission for that uh, column also. Now, the permissions, as I mentioned, like for Hive, it is, uh, we, we do the same thing what the native component supports. So for Hive, it is select, update, and uh, other indexes thing. For HDFS, it is read and write. For HBase, it is uh, uh, get and put. Uh, then on the, for each set of permissions, you can have one or multiple groups. And what we do is we integrate with AD, so it makes it very easy for you to um, uh, do a lookup of the users and groups and easily add groups to existing uh, policies, uh, ex existing permission set. If you want to have a new set of permission, you can easily add it from a UI itself. Um, the same range admin also has a REST API, so if you have another system which is managing all the entitlements, you can actually make a REST API call and um, add the policies directly. Mm. There's one more feature that we have which is pretty unique to Ranger that also goes to what uh, Balaji mentioned about multi-tenancy. Uh, we have a concept of delegated administ administration. So what you do is you can pick users or group and say that for a set of resources, they are the delegated admin. So what it, that essentially means is if I give an IT3 as a delegated administration, the user IT3 can actually log in and further manage the resources or the policies for the resources, yes, as delegated administration, administration privileges. So in a large enterprises, if you have multiple line of businesses, you can easily delegate those to different users and groups and let them manage their own policy. So it's much scalable and, and easy. So in Ranger, once you create a policy and when you save it, uh, what happens is we have a concept called Ranger plugin, uh, which is a Java component which runs within the scope of the individual component. So High Server 2 has the Ranger plugin, uh, the HDFS name known as the Ranger plugin. What this plugin does is it pulls all the policy locally. And then it does two things. One, it overrides the default implementation of the, na default native implementation of the enforcement and has its, its own custom implementation. The custom implementation uses this policy to enforce the, uh, the, uh, the access. The second thing it does is, as the users are accessing any resources, any, whether it's a database or, uh, or accessing a file, it collects all the access logs and sends it to a, a central auditing destination. Then you can come to Ranger itself and can start drilling down, run queries, and find out who has access what. I can drill down by a service, I can uh, drill down based on uh, access, whether who has got denied, I can also um, give a username and see what that user did. And if I want, I want to see if for the rest of the components also you can easily do, and do all the searches in one place. Uh, we support a different um, destination sources. You can send the audit logs to HDFS, RDBMS. It's a pretty scalable model. We are going to be start supporting uh, Solar and Kafka in the coming releases. Now, as we are talking about audit in uh, enterprises, you also want to make sure that you are compliant for various other uh, uh, regulations like SOX and all that. So we also audit any policy changes that are done. Since we are managing the policies across all the components, you can come into one place and see what are the policies that were updated. Uh, you can see who updated the policy, when they updated, and what changes they have done. So it's very easy for you to just uh, run a query or run a generated report and you know, meet some of your compliance requirements. So that's it. Yeah. Yep. Thanks. Back to you. Great. Thanks, Bosco. Can you switch back? All right. So let's, let's take the next 15 minutes to talk about where do we go from here in terms of we have done the basic security. So we have basic security tools. So when you go back to your sec organization and talk to your security teams, you can assure them that Hadoop is not the wild, wild west. We have the fundamentals of security built in, in into the ecosystem. So, but we can do more, right? So where can we go? And these are some of the ideas that we as Ranger community has, have come across for the customers, we come across as a community. But we love feedback, we love feedback in terms of work. But here are some of ideas, right? So in terms of administrations, we are thinking about doing tag-based policy. Now I'll talk about what tag-based policy means. And extending Ranger beyond Hadoop, right? So organizations, Hadoop is part of your modern data architecture. 
can we have Ranger support beyond Hadoop, other data stores as well? So we'll, let's talk about that in a second. We need to get to more single sign-on. We have basic fundamentals with Kerberos. Can we go and integrate with OAuth and SAML? Right? We need to figure out that part. Uh, from authorization, we have the sort of role-based access control today. Can we get to a more dynamic attribute-based access control? Uh, and auditing is, is becoming more and more important. Can we use the audit data and can we use Hadoop to bring more security to the organization where we can not only store our own audit data but bring organizational audit data? And can we use um, the infrastructure that we have to bring more intelligence into for the organizations itself, right? Can we use Hadoop for security for the organization? And, and the fifth aspect is bringing encryption, um, bringing encryption more as first class. And Owen talked about yesterday of some of the ideas. Um, and so this, this, we need to get more first class in encryption and masking as we go along. So let's take each of them and we'll talk about that, right? So on, on the tag-based policy, I wanted to go back into some of the conversations on governance. So that's where the need is for organizations to have a more consistent view of governance of all the view of data coming in, and be able to classify data. And the classification is based on a taxonomy, taxonomy specific to an industry. Uh, you will call in an oil and gas that in, uh, classified data as wells. You will call PCI data in retail, or you can call it in healthcare. You can go and call the data as sensitive or HIPAA. Uh, so the classification of a data as sensitive and as ba or based on geo is specific to an industry. So what we have done is we have, in, uh, as a community, we have come up and introduced a new project called Apache Atlas, um, and which is part of looking after the governance aspect. And the core aspect, core key component of uh, Atlas is going to be what's the meta store, and it's based on this knowledge store of taxonomies and be able to do data classification. It really means that as data is coming in and you've got volumes and volumes of data, can we classify and categorize that data? Can we classify the data as sensitive? Can we classify the data as being belonging to a geo? Right? Once we're able to do that and it's stored in this central metadata store and all the applications can use that. And we can use that in security as well. So let's look at an example. So in current world, uh, the way Ranger works is, as data is coming in, I'm using an example of a data ingested into HDFS and Hive tables built on that. In the current world, Ranger can control access at the HDFS level and Hive. And as Bosco showed, the Hive policies looks like if you take table one and column A, I can assign to a marketing group, and I can assign a select permission. I can take table two and assign it to a different group, and I can assign IT groups as create. So I'm doing segregation of duties here, but still based on the metadata of an each component, based on tables and columns. And if you're loading lots and lots of data, it's difficult to keep track of table, columns, files, and how are they correlated. So if I want to go a level up, I want to do some business classification. Right? So with Atlas, what we are thinking is we'll introduce this metadata server, which can automatically classify data as injustice coming in. So if I'm able to classify data, and in the previous example, I'm, I'm, I'm classifying table one column A as campaign data. And I, I'm classifying table two as log data. And this could be sensitive data, this could be geo-based data. It's based on the classification. And once you've done the classification, what really the other applications can use that, and what Ranger can use is it can start creating policies based on the tag. Now we can have a policy for marketing which says, for all campaign tag data, marketing team has a select permission. So any data, irrespective of its HDFS Hive, it's an HBase or any other place, if I am able to classify that data as campaign, then all of a sudden you have one policy called that campaign policy, and that's it, you're done. And it makes the job a lot easier of in terms of governance and security. And similarly for IT, I can, cl can classify data as logs, and it could be any data. And so I don't no longer have to specify this column or this file. The metadata server will have that knowledge, and Ranger will integrate with the metadata server to get that taxonomy. So this is one aspect we are looking at in terms of how we can make the administration a little bit better. The other aspect is going, uh, is, uh, is going the aspect of how we can plug in 
other data stores easily into Ranger. Ranger does today HDFS Hive, HPA, Storm, and Knox. So we're looking at Solar, we're looking at Kafka, we're looking at Yarn, but we know that as a community, we need to build the ecosystem where we can plug it into any other data store in the organization. So the core focus is extending Ranger, uh, not just for the core Hadoop components, but beyond Hadoop as well. And so we, what we have done is we have architected Ranger in a sort of a service stack model. And it's, the idea is you can introduce a new service very easily using a JSON. And, it, uh, and you put your parameters in the JSON and you introduce a service and it shows up in the Ranger UI. And you also need to build a plugin, a Ranger plugin, which plugs into that service, right? So let's look at an example. So we, Bosco talked about this architecture today. So what you saw in the demo was the Ranger administration portal, right? And we store the policies in a central DB, but the, act, the actual enforcement is done by these plugins. So we, we have a plugin at the name node, we have a plugin at Hive Server 2, we have a plugin for every region server. And these plugins pull up all the policies and do the enforcement. And they also write back the audit to the audit store. So these plugins will write, directly write back to HDFS or database in terms of audit store. But we can easily extend this by having a new plugin for a new service. So all you need to do is publish a new service and write a new plugin. And you will have the capability to manage that using Ranger UI. The way new service looks like, and this is something we are looking at Solar, for example. Solar is a search engine. So the way the service definition is based on a JSON is you will go and define uh, what, are you, what do you want to protect. In the Solar's case, it's collection, and it could be field. And so and how does it show up in the UI? So it's pretty easy. And then what kind of permissions needs to be part of that policy? In Solar case, it's create, update, and something else. So you, you go and define this, and immediately we can take that up and put that in the UI. So in the UI, you will go and see a Solar repository coming up, uh, which will have all these labels and in terms of what resources can protect and what permissions. So everything is extensible and defined using stacks. And the next step you need to do is then define a plugin for Solar. right? And the way plugins work is they are uh, implementation of an existing component interface. And I'm taking an example of Hive Server 2. Um, the Hive, in Hive Server 2, uh, the permissions were exposed as an API. It was an interface built by the Hive team, independent of Ranger. They built this, and the Hive has its own way of native authorization. <coughs> what we did in Ranger is we did an implementation of that interface. So we had the same context in terms of a query we added more richer analysis so that we can do. We can support wildcards. We can do column level interfaces. We can add dynamic conditions, right? So we, this plugin is where it's actually an implementation, and it stores. Once we do that, we can connect to a Ranger policy DB and start storing policies locally. And when you have a Ranger plugin, all the requests will start going through that plugin, and plugin will be the enforcer. Right. So in the case of Solar, we'll have a Solar plugin, which will be actually an interface implementation. If you need to have a new service, we need to just build the plugin. And its plugins can be as very easy and extensible, and they can be returned in any shape or form. Right. So that's, that's one model we can start looking at and see how Ranger, and this gets you into an organization of how you can support your big data ecosystem and more easily and more centrally. Okay. What's, so Come going beyond administration, the other aspect in access control that's coming in, and I'm looking at time, we got about five minutes before questions. So the other aspect of uh, is coming in is around dynamic access control. So we have role-based static access control today. Can we introduce more dynamic behavior? Like can you? So the dynamic example would be you control access based on time of the day. You control access based on where the user is logging in from, based on his IP address. You control access based on certain data elements. Uh, if the data element contains this, you control access. And this gets to, in the security world, what's called as more attribute-based access control. You're not looking at groups or roles. You're looking at user and data attributes and making a decision. Right? So within Ranger, what we have introduced is something called policy conditions. So 
And that's something we are thinking about, and we need to do more on that. Uh, but what essentially it means that I can add a condition, and this is, I can write any code that can be run within Ranger uh, that can add a condition to an existing policy. So this policy says HBase user can publish, and this is for, I think, a Kafka interface. But I can add a condition, and I can, in the, uh, by default, we are thinking about IP address, so I can add an IP address, so it becomes an AND condition. So it be, this user coming from this IP address can do publish. So if he's coming from some other IP address, he would be there. But I can easily add time and geo. I can say 9 to 5 PM. And, and we can add a code which checks the time of the day as per the context of the user request. And I can easily map it into the policy. So if you're logging in between 9 and 5, I can control your access. So there are various possibilities of where we can take this in terms of dynamic conditions. But we have already built the hook points in Ranger to do that part. So this gets it more closer to what we are thinking as attribute-based access control. Auditing. So the, like I said, the a big piece of uh, how enterprises use audit data is they will feed into their own security and monitoring systems. But more and more customers are asking, why can't we use Hadoop? Because it's so good at managing and storing and processing large amounts of data. Why can't we use Hadoop? Why can't we use streaming features that we have through Kafka and Storm? Why can't we build correlation logic um, into in Storm? And why can't we use the features in a hive to do and run analytics? And we can do machine learning. Uh, Peter from Yahoo talked about the future of machine learning. And machine learning is going to be huge uh, in the security world as well. So there is already some initiative. I don't know if you guys heard about the OpenSOC initiative from Cisco, which is open sourced. But there are already different initiatives companies are looking at of using Hadoop as your security monitoring system. But the way we can think about it is, is we have already have Hadoop audit from Ranger. And can we get the SNMP and network and other logs, um, syslogs, uh, from any other source? And H Ranger can potentially stream through Kafka. And we can add context enrichment in, in Storm and then do deeper analytics using solar. It could be Elasticsearch as well, and, and Hive. Right? So, and, and you can build your own analytical applications on top of that. But the idea is we start using Hadoop for more providing security for the entire organization, because it has a scalable approach of storing data. It, it can scale, and it can process. Right? That's one of the key requirements for your own security monitoring. Is to, is to able to store and process millions and millions of, it could be petabytes of data of all the logs. And, and if we can enable machine learning um, algorithms on top of this in terms of other Spark or anything else, that will bring the richer context. But we already, this is the thought process around many organizations are looking at how we can get Ranger data and use Kafka and Storm. Okay, so that's one possibility. All right, so finally we wrap up around data protection. So like I talked about, we introduced encryption in HTFS and HBase. Uh, the open source KMS needs a little bit more work, and, and we all as a community will be evolving with that. Uh, one thought about using KMS was running KMS on, with, within Ranger, uh, using the Ranger app server and the DB, and providing authorization for the KMS. So KMS itself has a lot of authorization in terms of who can create a key and, and uh, who can create encryption zones. Uh, we are thinking about exposing those authorizations in Ranger and, and becoming, making the KMS more production ready. But we need to work on that, and we need to work on more column level masking um, in Hive and Phoenix. So that's something we will keep evolving as we go. Okay. So quickly, we'll wrap up. Uh, if you need to have more information on Ranger, um, Ranger is an incubator project. You can go to ranger.incubator.apache.org. We need a new logo. <laughs> so if you guys have any ideas for a good logo, I have welcoming <laughs> invitations at that time. We'll have a prize for that, too. Uh, in Ranger, we have a wiki page where we put most of our um, documentations. Point four uh, is the release already out. Point five is being planned. You will see some release themes and documents around some of the things I talked about today. 
but we welcome your feedback. So you can go back, sign up. Uh, there's a mailing list here that you can go and sign up as well. So that's it. So we have a birds of feather session also coming up at 5.30. Um, so we can do more deep dive, more questions if you need it. But at this point, okay. we'll end up and have open for questions. Yes, we'll get the mic for you. So I have a question about the um, um, access control mm -hmm. that you will implement. So will it be possible also to configure um, a policy based on data that's, that the user is looking at, like row-based, so that he mm -hmm. can't look at specific rows that include like a country or, or yes. stuff? Yeah. yeah, that is exactly what Balaji mentioned by the dynamic policy and the attribute-based policy. So we will be able, we'll give you the hooks where you can actually look into the data. So if it's a medical record <coughs> and if it's a psych patient something, use that as a criteria to either restrict it or mask it. So you'll have the capabilities. That's the plan. Yeah, so we need to work in conjunction with um, the Hadoop components itself. Like for Hive Server 2, we get a context of a query. So Hive will parse the query and give all the columns. Um, and so if we need to get the values of the columns or the results set, we need to probably work with the Hive team to make sure they can pass another context which has the data on it. If we get that, we can implement that condition. Yeah. Uh, it's possible, so that's, the, that's exactly the direction we want to go, is where we want to give more dynamic based on the data. So it's based on a patient record, we want to do that. Today it's possible through views, so you can always create a view, and Ranger, can, you can give a policy for the view, but we want to get to that as well. Yes. What, what's the timeline of, of um, these features? So this has been proposed in the community. So I don't, I mean, we need to work with the Hive team and the other team based on that. So it's going to be a roadmap item for the community. Hi. So what happens if the Ranger server goes down? So a copy of the policies will be on every separate agent. Yes. Uh, and what happens, let, let's say, we start the name node. Mm -hmm. uh, do the separate agents persist the policies on disk, or they have them in the memory? So what happens? I'll, yeah, I'll try to answer then, Bosco, probably sure. the right person to get it. So let's take an example of name node. Um, so. Um, you will have a plugin running in the name node. In the case of HA for name node, we would recommend to have a plugin for primary and the secondary name node. So you have, say, have two plugins running, having the same copy. So if the server goes down, the name node will still have a copy from the last sync. It will keep doing your um, access control based on that. You won't be able to create any new policy until the server comes up. But existing policies will be enforced. And if the primary name node goes down, Secondary name node will have a plugin with the same copy. So it will keep running that part. So uh, when we are deploying, we'll recommend you to deploy the plugins in both the name nodes. And we are already can be installed through Ambari. So if you're using Ambari, Ambari takes care of that part. Yeah, just to add, <coughs> add to that, Ranger itself provides you a HA. So you can have multiple instances of Ranger admin running. So if, if all of them down, then as Balaji said, the last resort, it will use the cached one till the Ranger comes up. So the whole goal is at any given time, Ranger should not be the bottleneck or the single point of failure. Yes, uh, I want to go back to the um, content filtering and attribute-based access control issue. And uh, you know that when you create a policy, you have permissions that are made of objects and access modes. You know, and that is very, very good modeled into your system. But mm -hmm. When you talk about attribute based access control or uh, you go into the details of the content that you are uh, looking at, there is something that is not so straightforward to be modeled. Yes. And uh, you said something correct. You said, okay, we have views and we have permission on views. With a view, you have a, a, a new object that you can control. Correct and so you can have a permission. But uh, without the concept of the view, just for example, 
it, it is not so straightforward to say, okay, we give access you to that table only to the rows that are yep. owned by you, just for example. I agree. And this, the problem is that you, you write a query that you don't know what are the results. Yes. So uh, I, I would like to know if you are taking into account this kind of problems that are uh, old problems in the security yes. area, also for the relational databases and things like this, because uh, you are that absolutely will be very correct. interesting. You are absolutely correct. If it was simple, we'd have done it already. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I know, I know, uh, I know. Don't so know you you're said, absolutely correct. Yeah. And, and so, it, it, again, I'm going back to the example of Hive. Uh, so where we plug it into Hive today is we get the objects. We get the query, and Hive breaks down the query and presents it to us. So we know what columns are there in the query, and we can match it against the policy. We need to embed into a, probably a post token Hive where Hive is presenting the results, right? So we are, the way where we are today, we, we don't have the content of the data. So Hive is a concept of post tokens. Um, as well, so we can potentially work on a post hook with the Hive team, where Hive team presents that data back, and, and we can parse the results set and say, this result set contains this geo as well, so we need to filter that out, and we can probably filter the data out. So this is complicated, because it has impact on the Hive. Every time we can mess around with the query, maybe we're even thinking about putting a where clause in the query, uh, in the query itself. So modify the query and put a where clause, saying where this is equal to that, because we can filter that. But that has complications in terms of the whole, how, how you're you know, managing the query and how you're viewing it. So definitely, this is a very complex beast. So we got to take it in chunks. But we value your feedback. If you have some ideas on, I mean, this is a community thing. So if you have some ideas on how this can be done better, Please, we welcome feedback on that. I okay. don't know if you want to add anything. On that. Yeah, so just to add to the top of Balaji, right? That's why we started with the dynamic policy. The whole idea of dynamic policy is to give the ability to write custom code, whether it's an expression language or uh, rules. We, for the attribute base, we'll have our own custom implementation, which might end up using UDF or some of the whatever that we feel is the right way, which doesn't making that high as a bottleneck or anything like that. Yeah, yeah, but just just to conclude, I want to say that. I think that it is very good, the product that, because it's a, it's a product. Yes. Yeah, it's, uh, I see that it is an incubator, but probably it is more a product than other products that are not incubating. Yes. But uh, if you are strong in continuing this direction where everything is very good modeled, I think, and so without giving space to this kind of things that can move away from the, the right direction, that could be a very, very powerful problem. No, I agree. Sure. I agree. This yeah. is, like I said, this is a direction we as a community need to go, right? So we need to go to a, we can't, um, from a more views and object centric static access to, because that's where the most customers are facing. As you've done the basic security, we want to get more dynamic. And, and this becomes a case for multi tenant environment more, right? So, uh, Absolutely. So we are very cognizant this is a real requirement, and we want to do it early. But we want to solve it in the right way. So I mean, that's where the community feedback is more valuable, is we need to think through all things. Absolutely. Yes. Sure. So does Ranger works with rolling upgrades? Yes. Yes. So if you have a version of Ranger, which is, uh, let's say, you introduce a new field that between the agent and the server, mm -hmm. how does it work with rolling upgrades to actually you have to start the server, the, the so we the have a, yeah. So we have a recipe for that. Uh, the only criteria that we have put up right now is the Ranger admin is the, should be the latest version. And the plugins could be an older version. So you could upgrade a Ranger admin, don't change anything on the plugin, and then you can start rolling up one. Let's assume if you take edge based region server, you can start you know, restarting one, of, one at a time with the new versions. Uh, the plugins, they are tied with the component version because each of the components have their own API, and that can change over the versions. So since it is embedded within the component, you don't have to worry about it. Yeah. So it will actually will not have any downtime. So again, rolling upgrade, you need to, um, not sure if you attended today's session from Sanjay, the sequence is important sequence. in a rolling upgrade. So you, you cannot just rolling upgrade and on ad hoc. You need to have a sequence. So there is a sequence for Ranger where the Ranger admin needs to be upgraded, and then you do the component upgrade. So if you follow that sequence, that's what we have tested, and it works. It works. 
Okay, thank you. Okay. Okay. Questions or are you guys ready to get out? <laughs> All right. So with that we'll learn early. Appreciate. Thank you so much for coming in for the last session. Hope you had a good show. You guys are always welcome to the uh, Birds of Feather session. It's, it's a very informal session. We're going to have Q&As as well, like we did. It. So it's, there's no agenda for that, but it's centered around all these questions. So you guys are welcome for that as well. But thank you so Take much care. for coming.